Hello, this is a demo and talk on rubber stamps. The rubber stamp represents a kind of simple system of relief stamping, which has really existed for thousands of years in the form of cylinder seals pressed into clay tablets used in Mesopotamia. Relief stamps also have a tradition in both China and India, both for pressing into clay slabs and pots, as well as for applying pigment on fabric or paper. In the 1700s, the rubber plant was imported to Europe from Southeast Asia. Named Ficus elastic elastica, the rubber plant is a member of the fig genus. It has become naturalized in Sri Lanka, the West Indies, as well as the state of Florida in the United States. In 1839, the first rubber stamp was created by Goodyear. These early stamps made use of formed rubber, which was cast from a small piece of wood. They can also be cast from a matrix in which metal letterpress type has been uh, pushed. Soon, rubber stamps became part of government, administrative, and business operations, with the stamps used to certify invoices and other documents. Companies also developed ways to mass produce and personalize rubber stamps, and even invented self-inking models, which made the ink pad obsolete. Today, there are a great number of vendors who make and sell stamps created from various forms of clip art. Here is an example of uh, an alphabet in rubber stamp form. You can also have custom-made stamps from your line art. Rubber stamps are something we're quite familiar with as a, a means of signifying border crossings in your passport. They've also used by governments or revolutionary governments in this case to take the currency of Iran and um, transform it. Uh, this is the Rial in 1978 after the uh, Islamic Revolution in Iran. They would use rubber stamps to cancel out the Shah Pahlavi's face, and only then would the bank presumably take it. So when you're thinking about relief printing, it's not a bad idea to look at some excellent examples. Here we have Albrecht Dürer's Apocalypse, St. John's Vision of the Seven Candlesticks, a woodcut from the 15, late 15th century. But let's zoom in a little closer and closer still. So look at the ways in which Durer is cutting away from the wood in order to uh, uh, reveal the light areas of form. So the simplification of form in the eyes and the nose and the face and so forth. We might also look to a 20th century uh, woodcut artist like Franz Masriel uh, of Belgian fame. So here's one of his woodcuts of uh, figures working in a factory, and then a close-up of one of those faces. So you can see the way he's abstracting and simplifying the form. Um, he doesn't even have to delineate the full head. He just needs to show the areas that the diagonal lines behind it are stopping um, along an implied edge. In another woodcut for, by Franz Masriel, where, where you can see the strong use of figure-ground relationships to distinguish the smokestacks and the cities, but I call your attention to the foreground of this particular print, where you see the ways in which he has used lights and darks to simplify the form and to represent um, uh, various elements in grasses and flowers and so forth. So there's also a rich tradition of relief printing uh, that's connected to stamping that we can see in India for textile printing. So this is an Indian printing block which has been carved from end grain teak wood. And in this slide you can see um, um, the uh, stamp being impressed on the fabric. And oftentimes these would match up to produce um, um, regular patterns and so forth. In terms of using rubber stamps, I call your attention to the Tennessee artist Carl Gombert and the ways in which he's using this repeated stamp of a gun in order to create this kind of mandala form. And in fact, uses of, use of the stamp as a repeated element is uh, one of the real formal uh, 
possibilities of stamping. So in this example, Gombert has used uh, commercially created and generated stamps of various things from butterflies and moths to fish and bugs in order to create these mandala patterns. There's also the example of the folk artist Max Pritchard who printed New Testament scripture on the back of cereal boxes from stamps he carved out of floor linoleum. Or the use of stamps to alter currency. We saw that earlier with the example of the bill from Iran. There's the Where's George pro project where uh, this organization uh, puts a red rubber stamp on dollar bills and then you can use the serial number of the bill in order to track its location. Also as you're thinking about stamps I think it's worthwhile thinking about uh, groups of stamps or a series of stamps, ones that have various relationships to one another. So uh, here is a set of actually offset design postage stamps by uh, the Fluxus member Robert Watts um, from the collection of the Museum of Modern Art. But nonetheless, I think you can think about that sort of stamping as having some sort of uh, uniform design template or some kind of repeatable element. In this uh, example of um, landmark footprints by the collaborative team uh, Alora and uh, Klesdila, um, these uh, were um, specially cast and designed uh, soles of shoes. Um, and then the artists and their collaborators would walk along areas of the southern border of the United States in order to convey messages to people who might be crossing the border. They've also done this along other borders where immigrants cross. So the stamping is done by the weight of the body of the person wearing the shoes in this case. Just formally, I think it's worth looking at the work of Andrew Kozlowski when thinking about how you might use stamps and repeated elements. Kozlowski prints um, screen prints on uh, paper and then cuts them out and attaches them to the wall. So um, in this um, example here, you can see the way in which the shelf elements and so forth provide a kind of scaffolding for the work. So here I've got a series of stamps I've carved using a linoleum cutter, and I've cut these out of Speedball Speedy Cut. Um, and I'm using uh, office stamp pads uh, to uh, stamp vi various visual repeated elements from um, the relief carvings I've made out of the Speedy Cut. Um, I've got two stamp pads. One is a little bit uh, drier, it produces a little lighter impression, um, and then I've got one that's a little fresher. So as a stamp pad gets old, you don't necessarily need to discard it. You can kind of use it where you want sort of lighter impression areas. Um, you could work from the background to the foreground as I'm doing, or you could also work from the foreground to the background. You want to make sure when you cut your images out of the speedy cut, um, that they're not larger than your stamp pad itself. Um, I also like to cut them out, kind of silhouette them, so that'll give me a cleaner figure ground relationship in terms of making the uh, different elements. I also gang up, in this case, different figures, uh, so two or three together. Um, that allows me to build up multiple forms with um, one printing. Um, here I'm uh, sort of filling in areas and I can selectively use um, how I'm putting as much pressure on it to transfer parts of it. Um, as I move to the foreground I'm using stamps with um, the fresher pad to get more contrast, kind of building up the form there. Um, um, you can practice on computer paper. I'm printing here on a piece of uh, white Stonehenge. Um, so there are lots of ways to sort of um, um, use the stamps um, in a variety of combinations. Um, I'm always looking at the white of the page there, sort of thinking about where I'm going to sort of uh, build up the form and, and put it in there. 
Also, you want to use your palm or your fingers to get sort of even impression across the uh, carving that you've made in the speedy cut. You'll also notice that in the lower right, I've got some paper stencils I've made. Um, and so to make those, I uh, put the stamps on a piece of computer paper. I cut them out with X-Acto blades. And in a moment, I'll show you how I use those to mask out areas um, I can print um, on, the, um, uh, on the paper. Um, so this is a way to kind of uh, go in and silhouette things. Uh, in different ways. Um, um, I do think the, um, uh, the shapes are really important to make this kind of uh, project work, uh, just in terms of thinking about how they interlock and work in relationship to one another. It's good when you place it down just not to move it, leave it in one place. Um, um, don't try to skid it around too much. So I'm sort of building up this composition here. Now I can take the paper stencils and lay that over something that's already been printed. And then with more crowd scene, I can put that behind it there. Um, here with another sign, I can do the same thing. I can also ink a um, part of a stamp, not the whole thing, kind of use it as a way of creating soft edges and transitions and so forth. So I hope this approach is something that um, will help you make the best of your rubber stamps to create um, complex, interesting pictorial images.